Welcome to Behind Closed Doors, Ruby Barker, everybody. Hello, Woo! everyone. Hi, Gorge. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You look amazing. Let me tell you, I am so excited to have you here today. This is so exciting for me. So thank you so much for joining us. That's okay. You have had a pretty crazy start to the year, haven't you? It's been mental. Yeah, literally, like with Bridgerton coming out, everything is just, I've had so much to do. Like I've gone from zero to 100 overnight. It must be so exciting because Bridgerton launched on Christmas Day, which literally only feels like, a, well, it was a couple of weeks ago. And since then, it's become the most watched show on Netflix ever since, which is just is it the, the most... most the most watched show. Like, that's what our producers have told me. And I mean, I knew that anyway. I think there was something there was a record of 64 million views in the first four weeks. Wow. Can, can you, like, <laughs> it's mad that you actually didn't even know. Like, that's how big it's gone. It must have been the best Christmas present for you ever coming out then. Literally, like I've been really lucky because obviously everyone's in lockdown right now in the UK, which is super depressing. Um, mm. And everyone's just trying to stay safe and people have lost their jobs and all that sort of stuff. And I've been mm. so blessed with Bridgerton coming out because it's just given me so much stuff to focus on during this time. So I feel really, really lucky. Have we're really look we're really lucky to have you and to have Bridgerton because I feel like it's really helped my lockdown and I mean it's clearly helped a lot of people because the buzz around it is insane everybody is talking about Bridgerton right now and rightly so but when did you actually wrap filming because I heard was it quite a while ago yeah I wrapped in February 2020 stop yeah so like it was like 10 months before the show actually came out so it was like, did that even just happen? Do you know what I mean? When you're waiting oh, for that long. Oh my God. So so you wrapped in February. So when did you actually begin filming? I began the year before. So it must have been around, I started filming around August 2019. Oh my God. Like, can we all just take a moment for that? That's how long these masterpieces take. You can see why it's a masterpiece. You know, it's good things take time. It's good. the ball scenes, all the ballroom <laughs> scenes. Like, oh really? Took hours like hours to shoot oh my god tell me what was the, like the longest scene to shoot the longest scene to shoot well it would have to be one of the balls that we went to maybe the Cowbridge ball I, re I remember you know getting picked up being up to do my hair at like 4am because I had to get up to get my hair dry for when I for when I had to get pick, picked <laughs> up and then I'd get picked up at sometimes around five travel to set get in hair and makeup Get down to get down to set for about midday ish, about lunchtime, oh and then I'd be I'd just be waiting for hours. I mean, sometimes I would only be in a ball for a little flicker of a second <laughs> on screen, yeah. but I've been to so many. I've spent hours at them. So yeah. So you are you missing the balls now? Are you missing going to those balls? Because it's a lot different to real life, isn't it? I do. I do a bit. I do a bit. I mean, I'm not sure how much Marina's really into that scene. But yeah. Yeah. I feel like you'd find Marina more at a rave than you would at a ball <laughs> if she could be at one. But, I'd be there um, with Marina for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so take me back to the moment. I mean, it's been a whirlwind clearly for you, but take me back to the moment when you found out that you'd landed a main role in a Shonda Rhimes series because, oh my God, wow. Well, on the build up, I just, I couldn't sleep. Do you know what I mean? Like I was just going on all the time, like I have to hear back from this job. Like I'm gonna die if I don't get it. Like you don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was all I could possibly think about. And then I was actually at another audition for, it was for sex education. Just oh, for, no way! Yeah, just for a small role. And I got the phone call from my agent and she was like, oh my God, you've landed Bridgerton. And all of a sudden I didn't care anymore, like whether or not <laughs> I got leave. this job. I was like, I just leave. <laughs> I thought, I'll do the casting anyway, but who cares? I've got this, I've got the best role of the year. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I actually feel emotional you telling me that story. I'm like, I'm so happy for you. I know you've done it, but that's so amazing to hear because obviously, I mean, I think we'll go into this a little bit later on in the podcast, but for an actress to get that phone call for this dream job that like you say, you've been losing sleep over. Yeah. I can't even imagine that feeling, like how good that feeling was. Oh yeah, it was, it was just like a massive weight off my shoulders. A massive weight. I mean, I put a lot of pressure on myself anyway. Mm. I'm a very mm. motivated person. 
and I was, I've sort of been on it myself, like, you've got to land that iconic job before you hit 23. Like, come on, <laughs> you've got to do it. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> but it, it landed, you know, it, it did come. Wow. And yeah. who did you call first? Like, so you, your agents called you. Who did you call first to tell them the news? I called my boyfriend at the time because oh. he'd been working with me for years doing self-tapes and auditions wow. every single week. So he was the first person that deserved to know when I was allowed to share the news. Yeah, wow, I guess that's a big thing as well, being actually able to share the news. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember how long it was before I was allowed to say anything, but I had to keep it on the down low until the casting announcement came out. How do, you, how do you like keep something like that a secret? Because I mean, when you get casted in such an incredible role, all I'd want to do, I'd want to get to the highest building in my city, <laughs> get a megaphone and tell everybody. <laughs> literally, literally. I did want to, but I just couldn't, couldn't do it. <laughs> NDAs and all that, do you That's know what I mean? <laughs> it's all serious stuff. It's all serious stuff. Now, getting cast in a Shonda Rhimes series, I mean, she's created some of the most incredible shows, most watched shows ever, Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder. How was it working with such an iconic showrunner? Oh, it, it was just amazing. Like, like we had, um, you know, I never actually met Shonda. This is what wow, I get. Really? Like, no, I never actually met. She's like this big mysterious character that I've met. I've never actually met. I have wow. met. I have met Betsy Beers, um, and I have met. Obviously, I've met Chris Van Dusen. Yeah, because he oh was the showrunner God. on the show, and he is right. just such a lovely man. Like, he's one of the writers as well. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. So a strong team behind Bridget. I mean, clearly it's a strong team behind Bridgerton because what they have created is just outstanding. Yeah, yeah. People have absolutely gone wild for it. And talk to me a little bit about the audition process. So you said that you'd built yourself up and you were like, I have to get this role. Like you'd put so much pressure on yourself. So what was the actual audition process like? So I got the call about the project and I got sent through the scripts to episode one and the scenes and it was a scene with Lady Featherington in the slum and uh, I read I read the whole script and this doesn't happen often you you know actors we get sent scripts every single week some are a hit some are a miss but when Bridgerton came through I read that script so fast like you wouldn't even believe I read it in 20 minutes episode one I was like wow I have to get this it was just so good um and then I did I think I did a self-tape so that's when I just record at home the audition and I sent that off and then I think it was about a week or two weeks later I got a call saying that Betsy Beers, Chris Van Dusen and the casting director would love to meet me so I went down to London went in a room I had some new audition sides I did my casting I left in a half because I thought I didn't get it. <laughs> really? Yeah, I thought I did a really bad job and I was like, I was fuming. I remember I made a phone call after and I was like, I have that right up. <laughs> I've lost the job. I don't know what I did, but it just, I don't know. And then, um, and then I mean, it was because when I went into the casting, I sat down and I was just so overwhelmed. I didn't know what to say. I and bet. usually I'm quite a chatty person and I just yeah. couldn't say anything. And I think that's why... <laughs> I felt like I didn't do a very good job at sort of selling myself. But Chris said later, he said, I like the fact that you were so comfortable in the silence when you came in. And I was like, I never even thought about it that way. But so, yeah, I I went and I met them. I did that casting. And then after that, two weeks later, I got a phone call saying they'd want to see another another self-tape. So I did that self-tape. But about a week or two weeks later, I can't really remember. I got a phone call. (laughs) saying that I got the job. And then it's a whirlwind after that. Yeah, and then it's just been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it seems like it seems like quite a lengthy process and I guess like obviously with covid and everything I guess that's probably made it a little bit more difficult and maybe a bit slower not being able to meet people in person quite as often, you know, doing the more self tapes than than usual. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. But you must have been up against thousands. If I mean, I can't even imagine how like how many girls you would have been up against. You know, I don't actually know how many girls. I was up, I mean, that's I probably a good thing. When you were doing the auditions, it's probably a good thing you didn't know. Yeah. Oh, wow, like I think it, you know, it's crazy and I think something that a lot of actors speak about is, you know, rejection and going through that kind of process of really wanting something and 
being rejected because obviously sometimes you're not right for the part or for whatever reason you don't get the part. Is that something that you've kind of had to go through through your journey to where you are now? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. I have lost so many jobs, hundreds. I've done so wow. many self tapes, so many auditions and you do them, you do your best. They get sent off and then you never hear anything back from, from them ever again. All of that hard work and you never hear even a thank you. <laughs> this, this is it. You don't even hear a thank you. You've just got to keep on rolling with the punches and just go, right, next one. And mm. there is there is a quote and it says, like, insanity is, like, doing the same thing again and again and expecting yeah. something different. But you just have to keep on to any young actors out there. You just have to mm. keep on knocking on those doors mm. and eventually one will open. Mm. How do you keep? That. How do you keep that strength? Because that you know, obviously, as humans, I think in in all types of work, but especially in the acting world, going through rejection isn't always the nicest thing. But how do you keep that strength to be like, you know, what do you kind of tell yourself to get through or over that situation? I tell myself that I'm brave, <laughs> yes. that I'm strong, yes, and that I am um, I'm talented. You know, and you just have to sometimes have a word of yourself and have mm. good good self inner talk. Talk to yourself well, you know, be kind to yourself, you know. Mm. Those daily yeah. affirmations, I think, in life in general right now are so important to, you know, speak well to yourself and, and speak good about yourself. It's so important. And especially in the acting world, I can imagine that is so important. So, yeah, to any young actors, that's a lovely bit of advice there. Yes. Now, before we get into the real Bridgerton Goss, I've got so many questions. Honestly, the producers are probably going to tell me off because I'm just going to want to talk for hours. But before <laughs> we do go into that, I wanted to learn a little bit more about you beforehand. So before Bridgerton, what were you kind of doing? I know that you starred in shows such as Doctors. Yeah. What was kind of going on then? Tell me a little bit about you before the blow up of Bridgerton. OK, so before the blow up of Bridgerton, right, <laughs> I didn't I didn't really know. I, I always wanted to be an actor. But I got really into economics when I was at school. Oh, really? Yeah. And then I, I had a great teacher called Mr. Benoit. And shout out to Mr. Benoit. Shout out to Mr. Benoit. Hope you're listening. Hope Come you're on. Listening. <laughs> Haven't spoken to him in years, actually. But it would be nice <laughs> well, I bet he's up. proud of you right now. I yeah. bet he's watched and thought, my God. This wow. is it. I worked really hard and I, I, got into, um, I got into the LSE, London School of Economics. Wow. To study international relations. And when I was, I was volunteering out in Africa during my summer holiday and I went to Bangladesh the next year as well. And when I was out there, cause obviously like you're in a third world country and you sort of mm. see the fragility of life. I just mm. sort of was like, I've just got to follow my passion and do what I love. And I love doing that sort of work, but I've, I've always wanted to be an act, an actress. Yeah. So I decided when I came back that that was what I was going to do. So I turned down my university offer and said I wasn't going. Yeah, my parents didn't like that too much. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. wow. <laughs> I got a job at the National Railway Museum in York. Oh my God, I've been there. Have you? Love it. <laughs> on the front desk, I was on the front desk. I was like, hello, welcome to the National Railway Museum. If you'd like a guidebook or a map, I can help you. I, I love to... that. So I guess that's a bit of acting, isn't it? A bit of performance. A bit of acting, yeah. But I had to do that same performance to every single customer that came into the museum. <laughs> <laughs> I bet by the end of the day, you were just like, oh, come in, come on in. Just get in the museum. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So I worked there. And when I was working there, I heard about community theatre in York. And that's where I got started. I just got, I just did work for free, doing wow. plays and stuff like that. And I did a play called mankind and it was like this medieval mystery play and i had to learn like pages and pages of ye old english script <laughs> and latin in a week in a week for a one night production and i had the lead role both the lead roles and i had to um i had to perform for a one night show and i didn't think i could do it and i did it and then after that, I did the mystery plays where I worked with this Royal Shakespeare Company director wow. called Philip Green. And he got he helped me get me signed to my first agency. And it was through my first agency that I started off doing bits of daytime television. And then I joined the cast of Wolf Blood on the CBC yes. for season five. And then that's really where I got started, you know, and I just built my CV up. I didn't go to drama school. I didn't have the money to go to drama school. Wow. 
so all the money to live in London. So mm. I just mm. thought I'm just going to hustle my way up because there's so many actors that have never been to drama school. And I mean, I got rejected from National Youth Theatre as well. I didn't get in. And oh so, God. yeah, I know. So but the, they're kicking themselves now. <laughs> well, this is the thing. And I mean, for again, for like any other young actors that don't get into drama school, or don't get into National Youth Theatre. There's so many other ways mm. that you can get into this industry. And everybody that I've met has got in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great to hear because I think that my next question, if you didn't go on to it, was going to be, you know, did you go to drama school? How long did you study for? Because people do kind of automatically expect, you know, young successful actors to have done that kind of, you know, have gone down that route. And I think it's even really nice to know that you kind of started your career in York because I think as well, there's that perception of London that you have to be in London. And I guess now a lot of your jobs may be maybe in London, you know, the screenings, the testings may be there, but it's great to know that you actually started out in little old York. Like York's oh, a gorgeous lo little place. There's loads of great, th great theatre. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like in the north. Like I've I've lived in Newcastle, um, and there was great theatre there as well, um, and great Geordie actresses that I know that are just some of the most talented women I know are working class northern actors. You know. I love that. And I guess I guess it's just going and finding those places where you can get involved and finding these community theatres and being active about what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you obviously throw threw yourself in at the deep end. You're like, yeah, well, I'll get the two main roles. I get all this, all the <laughs> scripts in the world. Literally. You weren't messing about there. No, not at all. I also did, um, I did like student, student films to get started. So at the universities where they've got students studying film studies, yeah. They've got to make films and they need young actors who are cheap or free to do their films. I mean, that's how I got my first showreel built up, was wow. just getting in contact with people at the unis and saying, look, I'm an actress and trying to build up my CV. Do you have anything coming up? Can I be in one of your student films? And they all came back to me, you know? Yeah, so it's just putting yourself out there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's some, some good tips for any young actors listening. Like, I think it's really inspirational to know, you know, your journeys, your journey started out where you did and you've cut and look, look at what you're doing now. It's I amazing. Know. So moving on to Bridgerton, people have described the show as a crossover between Gossip Girl and Downton Abbey. Yeah. So we wondered if you could be cast in any of those shows, which one would you go for? Gossip Girl. Yes, and who would you be? I don't know. I don't know. A new character. I just, a new character. She's I just bring feel her like Claire. In, in Downton, Downton's a very traditional period drama. Mm. I'm not sure what, what sort of role I would get in Downton, but Gossip Girl would be sick. Gossip Girl, you could have a really, really cool role. And I love Gossip Girl. I actually binge watched that the whole of the first lockdown. Yeah. I'm obsessed. It's, 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 it's nearly on par with Bridgerton, but you know Bridgerton's my favorite. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it better be. No. Oh, it is, it is. Described as something we've never seen before, Bridgerton has been praised for its diversity and inclusivity, which is something certainly to be celebrated. But what has it meant to you to be a part of something so refreshing? Oh, literally, it means everything. You know, I never thought that I'd ever be in a period drama, like, in a role like Marina. Mm. I, I've mm. seen um, Belle, the film about Dido Elizabeth Bell, yeah. who was a mixed race aristocrat in the Georgian period of time. And I, I saw that film and I was like, wow, that would be amazing to play that character, but it's already been made. I'm probably not going to be in a period drama simply because of, because of my race. Um, wow. And then obviously getting the casting through from Bridgerton and seeing that it's a Shonda Rhimes thing, you know, mm. and that diversity is like one of the main objectives of the show. Mm. It was just amazing to be a part of it. It's amazing. It was amazing to watch. And I think it's such an important um, message that Bridgerton is sending, you know, not once watching Bridgerton did I question you know, the time and the era and what was going on. It was just such a celebration of everybody. And I thought it was so powerful and so amazing to watch. That's great. It is, isn't it? It is, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And let's talk about Marina because I think as well, there's so many different messages within Bridgerton and Marina, 
the the females in the cast as a whole are strong women and of yeah. course there's this sense around you know we need to get married we need to you know you need to be wed and obviously you can't have children without being married it's it's frowned upon and whatever yeah but the, i feel like the female roles and especially marina she's such a strong character and that's one of the favorite things like that's one of the most favorite things i love about her is how strong she is and how much she kind of sticks up for herself yeah yeah definitely i think i'm very similar to marina in that way I've got quite a strong personality and um, I'm not afraid to stick up for myself either and it's one of the things that made me fall in love with her straight away. I love that because... Yeah. I love that because you can really see that and I think, you know, you spoke before about your self-tape and I I actually watched your self-tape on Instagram and I remember watching it and just being like, that is Marina. Like, I know know I've watched it now, but like (laughs) you nailed that scene there and then before Marina even really existed to me, to the viewer. And... It was just so amazing to see. And I think it's really interesting that people do say, you know, a lot of actors can say, oh, you know, sometimes I've related to my character, but I feel like that is really reflected in your acting and in your performance with Marina. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And something you mentioned in the caption, which, you know, I loved, I'm, I'm very emotional. In your caption, you put, um, Bridgerton has changed my life or this has changed my life. Tell me how has Bridgerton really impacted your life and how has it changed since it's aired? Okay, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm ready. Fir- so first of all, I'm a, I'm a millennial. I'm obsessed with Instagram, okay? Yes, <laughs> me too, I've, me too. I've gone from like 2,000 followers to over 160,000. I didn't realise you were you were on two. Like, <laughs> obviously I knew your Instagram, everyone's Instagram's going to have grown after that show, but that's quite a bit of growth in a few weeks. It's quite a bit of growth. Like it has been absolutely popping and like <laughs> requiring so much attention. It's just been incredible. So that's happened like right in front of me. Also the amount of gifts that I've been sent is really? silly. It is like bloody <laughs> Christmas every day. My friend was over and um, there were like four deliveries in 10 minutes <laughs> of just things from people on Instagram just saying, hey, we really like you in Bridgerton, please check out our jewelry and stuff like that. Oh yeah. my word. And I guess your your DMs must have been flooded as well with fans. Yes, yeah. I try to reply to I try to reply to as many of them as I can. I get a lot of messages about um from young actors and stuff like that, which is nice. But I've had the opportunity on this podcast to be able to talk a little bit about my journey. Because yeah. I get a lot of I get a lot of questions about that, yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad that those guys will be able to come and listen to this and hear a little bit more because it is so interesting to hear your journey. And like I said before, it's so it it's just so important to, to to show that hard work really gets you, you know, where you are. And you've really believed in yourself, and clearly you're doing so well from it. But I must it must be overwhelming going from like you said before. I guess I mean, what do you call a normal life? But before Bridgerton, to, yeah to now to post Bridgerton like, I haven't been recognized yet I haven't been oh. recognized yet stop I think because everyone's just wearing masks everywhere yes. so. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it. gonna be it's gonna be crazy when we come out of lockdown and people do start seeing you in the street because honestly like I'm starstruck doing this podcast with you so are you I would. Sure, no I am I am like honestly like I do this podcast all the time with so many amazing different people but I was like this is Ruby from Bridgerton I am buzzing about this podcast today oh that that means so much it's so heartwarming (laughs) genuinely (laughs) you're gonna get so much more of that I know I know do you think that having this kind of time in lockdown is going to be good for you in in the terms of you might have a little bit more chance to adapt to this newfound kind of fame that you have got totally totally I don't know how I'd cope if I was getting recognised <laughs> on the street, like, straight away. Like, reggae, who plays the Duke, his life yes. has changed. I'm so happy for that boy. Like, wow. he, he is just one of the nicest guys. He had the same hair and makeup stylist on Bridgerton, so we see oh, each wow. other in the mornings and stuff. And he really is a gentleman, like, through and through. Like, in real life, he is just a lovely guy. I feel like everybody listening to this right now is going to be like, wow, I'm just falling in love with him even more. Because I feel, (laughs) if you say you're not in love with reggae, like... Who is it? Like, genuinely, like... (laughs) (laughs) Was it hard being on set with all of these fantastic people? Yeah, it was was intimidating. Like, I was working with the, like, Polly Walker, 
I know. It played my aunt, Lady Featherington. Yeah. She is a massive inspiration to me. She always has been. I've grown up watching Polly on TV. I remember watching her in Prisoner's Wives. And I think yes. Phoebe. Phoebe was in Prisoner's Wives as well. Yeah, she was. Um, And I remember sitting there and I was like 15 and thinking like, oh my God, imagine if one day I got to work with the Polly Walker. Do you know what I mean? Wow. And then I find out that she's playing my aunt. And my uncle was played by Ben Miller, who played, I don't know if anyone's going to know this reference, but he played Boff in Johnny English. And that was like my favourite film as a kid while you growing did. up. You did? You did, yeah. I've just, re- I've just put that together. I love that film. <laughs> oh, me too. It's brilliant, isn't it? So, yeah, dream come true, literally. Wow. And talk me through like your first day on set. So I guess... There must have been so much apprehension coming into this filming. And like you said, you know you're going to be working with some of these incredible stars that you've looked up to. What was the first day like stepping onto that set and being Marina? First day on set, call sit on. By that, do you know what I mean? Getting used to those. I actually, I asked costume for a call sit to take home with me just so I could practice breathing in it. (laughs) I was about to say, they look really hard to wear. And I think, you know, I I was talking to some of the girls the other day and I was like, you know, I don't even wear a bra. So how could someone be expected to wear this corset every day? Where it physically does kind of affect your breathing, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And your upper back. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Do you know what's crazy? Back in like the 18th century, women used to wear these in the mill. Do you know what I mean? Like (laughs) how, what was that about? Like, what was that actually about? I mean, it's crazy to think that you were, I guess they were kind of expected to wear them back then. That was the fashion and that was the aesthetic that yes. a woman should have. Yes. It's wild. I know, it's crazy. I think they should come back in. I think they look sexy. I mean, I do like them and I feel like people have gone, because of Bridgerton, people have gone obsessed with them. I feel like our TikTok, our PLT TikTok has gone crazy over corsets. Yeah, so yeah. That's I have, definitely down to you guys. I had a Mr. Pearl corset made for me as well. Me, Nicola, and I think Polly all had Mr. Pearl corsets. He does corsets wow. for like high and low, like Kim Kardashian, hello. Like he makes her corsets and he was the loveliest man. Like such a sweet guy. So many amazing experiences from this film. And like, what was your favorite outfit? So you had, we spoke about the ball before. You had some amazing gowns. You had some incredible outfits. Everybody, I mean, the outfits were brilliant. What was your favorite look in the whole of the series? My favorite look was I wore two yellow dresses and they were both stunning. I wore one on my engagement, and then there was another one, I think it's in like episode four, and my hair's all big, and I've got tiara on, and I've got that yellow dress on, and I come down I feel like that's your iconic look. Yeah, they're wearing the Featherington family colors, you see. Yeah. (laughs) Marina's usually in like whites and pinks, and do you know what I mean? Very toned down, simple country girl sort of looks. And then I just got to wear this outrageous, dress and it was just brilliant i love it <laughs> you looked amazing I, th- I loved the costume i think it must be so incredible to see all of those costumes. i'd love to be a fly on the wall in costume and see where all them dresses are kept and oh, just see what it looks like honestly like there's a massive like costume um warehouse and it was incredible it was just filled with period costumes like Oh, and there were different stations God. and they were all putting on like diamonds on everything and like embroidering everything. And there was just, there's a massive team behind costume. It's a complete operation. You can see, so obviously I said before, so much has gone into the film and I think down to the costume, down to every minor detail, every single detail has been thought of. And that's yeah. clearly why it's so incredible. But something that has been discussed highly around Bridgerton is the R-rated scenes. It's been yeah. quite saucy at times. And I mean, I think Marina managed to skip her share of yeah. R-rated <laughs> scenes. But how is it being an actress filming those kind of things? Like, does it ever get less awkward? I don't know, you know, because I've never actually, I've never actually done it myself. Oh, really? No, no, I don't know. <laughs> do you get nervous, like thinking, okay, one day I'm going to get cast, I'm going to have to do this? I have, I, I did get offered a job before where they wanted me to do that. And um, I turned it down in the end because the part, oh, really? yeah, the part just wasn't, 
there wasn't enough lines, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> I wanted to see too much of my you dairy air. They didn't want enough of my voice. So, you know. Good on you. Good on you for turning that down because look what you got instead. Like, wow. Yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. And have you watched Bridgerton back? Because I was saying to you before off air that I've actually watched Bridgerton with my mum. I watched it over Christmas. And yeah, those saucy scenes, let me tell you, it was a bit, I was a bit hot under the collar watching with my mum. I'm not going to lie. I was yeah. a bit like, are you looking at the screen? Are you looking around? The... I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, it gets worse. My boyfriend was in the room at the time as well. So all three of us are sat over Christmas watching it. And as much as I loved it, I was like, oh, this is a bit saucy. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it on my own later. <laughs> so did you watch it back at all? Did you watch it with your family? No, God, no. Really? I didn't watch it with my family, no. She's like, why would I put myself I through that? To look at reggae's bottom with my dad i'm perfectly fine watching it on my own my sister's watched it my granddad in the states he's watched it as well my dad's dad wow. yeah they must be so proud of you your family must be immensely proud of you yes they are yeah wow it's incredible and so talk to me about your times on the set now there must be some secrets. There's gotta be some juicy gossip. Like what was your favorite moment or your favorite memory from set? And what was your funniest memory from set? Okay, I've got two, I've got two memories from set. So one of my favorite memories was when me and Nicola had a me and Nicola Coughlin, she plays my cousin Penelope. We had a really long day working, like really long day shooting. And anyway, we got dropped off at this hotel and it was like the middle of the night, do you know what I mean? <laughs> we got dropped off at this hotel and it was called the Nags Head. And it was in the middle of the countryside, like there was there were no pavements, like there was nothing about. We got out of the car, thought here we are, the car drove off, tried to get in the hotel, discovered that we're locked out the hotel. <laughs> And then we ended up sitting in this little beer garden for ages. No! <laughs> and we had to be picked up the next day at like 6am. Oh my God, to... so did you get any sleep? Barely. We got about three hours, three hours sleep and then we had to go to set to reshoot the scene. And then we had to go all the way down to London for a dance rehearsal. <laughs> So it's not all glamour, guys. No. It's not all glamour. As great as the job is, you can sometimes get locked out of your hotel. Exactly. You mentioned before as well, you know, there were so many incredible actors on set. Who was your best friend on set? Who did you get on with the most? Who did I get on with? You know what? I didn't get to work with this guy a lot, but he's been, like, a really good friend to me, like, throughout Bridgerton and after Bridgerton, and that's Martin's who played Will, the boxer. He is yes. such a beautiful man, a really nice guy. And I've also got a shout out to, obviously to Claudia, to Nicola, mm. and to Harriet and Bessie as well. They're all great girls. Like, genuinely, I love them all. You know, it was just fantastic to work with them. It must be amazing to make so many like new friends after what has felt like, I guess, so many weeks of filming. I guess you become kind of like a family. Yeah, completely. The Bridgerton family. Yeah. And okay, the Bridgerton family, they're the best kind of family around, babes, exactly. let me tell you. I would love to be part of the Bridgerton family. I'd love to be a daughter. It'd be amazing. Well, the Featherington family. The Featherington family, really, for me. I think they're, yeah. I think they're superior anyway. The Feather the Featherington family, they definitely had um, something about them. I love the Featherington family. They were yes, great. definitely. Now, I've got a bit of a spoiler alert. It's not a spoiler. I'm not actually going to ruin it. But if any listeners haven't finished watching Bridgerton, then you might want to skip forward maybe 30 seconds to a minute because I'm just going to... I need to say something. I need to ask something. So remember, skip forward. So we were so... Oh, there's people in the room literally covering their ears. <laughs> it, I won't give it away, I promise. But I was so shocked. I'm going to say we, but it was definitely me. I was so shocked when I found out who Lady Whistledown was. I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah. whoa. So I wondered, did you know from the beginning, did you and the rest of the actors know from the beginning who she was? Or did you have to wait to the end to find out? No, I knew. I knew from the beginning who she was. Oh, I feel like we can't really talk about it because people don't know. But how was that working with such actress? It's so actor. It's scandalous, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I Absolutely feel like shocking. Yeah. I would be annoyed if I was Marina. Well, I feel like we Marina do doesn't. Much. Marina doesn't necessarily know yet, does she? 
let's put a yet dot 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 there dot, so dot, dot. yeah so i mean the show is obviously based on a book and there's eight of them so do you think there's going to be eight seasons please say yes yeah, I mean, come on, look at the success of, like, Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, yeah. Bridgerton. It'd be crazy not to. Exactly. I think so, yeah. And so season two has already been recommissioned. What can you tell us? Is there anything you can let us know? Look, I can't really tell you much about season two, but what I can tell you is that there's going to be some new characters, and that's going to be super exciting. Oh, my God, I cannot wait. And I need to know, will Miss Thompson live happily ever after? I don't know. Maybe you should read the book, book five. Oh yeah, I, I can't. I can't. Book five? Is it book five? Yeah, book five. Wow. Really comes in. You, if you read, if you read book five, you you might spoil it for yourself, but you'll see where her journey takes her. I'm so excited. So does is that kind of exciting for you to know? I guess you've read all the books. Uh, yeah. So is that exciting for you to kind of know where Marina's journey is going and then kind of well, where Marina's, your journey well, in Bridgerton's going? Well, the interesting thing is Marina's not actually in the books until book five and she's only mentioned in the opening. You hear it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they created this whole storyline of Marina for the series. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, so I there's only a little bit. It. There's only a little bit about her in the books. Only a tiny bit. And what, like, we needed Marina. She was a fantastic character, so I can't wait. Do you know anything about, like, have you got filming booked in already? Is it, can you say that? I can't don't say, have to. I can't That's say. It. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I wish I could. I'm pressing you. I'm pressing you. No, I completely appreciate it. Honestly, I think it's such an incredible show and it's so amazing to talk to you today. And, you know, hopefully that Marina, Miss Thompson is going to be coming back and I really hope that she does live happily ever after. Finally, what is the biggest thing you think you'll take away from this whole experience? Uh, the biggest thing that I take away from the whole experience is definite, definitely just a family for life. Um, out of all the cast and the crew and the people that I've met while working on it. That's so lovely. We cannot wait to see the family reunited. And Ruby, congratulations on an incredible start to 2021. You are a prime example of what hard work can bring and you're so inspirational. It's been amazing chatting to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you too. But, but before you go, we've got a little game. Now, it's a game called Who Said It? Bridgeton style, of course, um, where I'm going to try my little tail out in acting for you. Okay, cool. I don't know how this is going to go down. I've suddenly got nervous. I'm like, okay, I've got to do some accents. I've got to act in front of a, an amazing actress. So, um, yeah, I'm going to present you with five key quotes from Bridgerton. Okay. And you need to guess who said those quotes. Okay. Do you feel confident? I, 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 you know what? Um, no. <laughs> but I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a you go. You said to me before you've actually only been able to watch it back once. Yeah, so I I've guess... only been able to watch it once. It makes me so nervous watching myself. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, what is it actually like watching yourself back? It's bloody weird. <laughs> <laughs> bloody weird. Okay, is everybody ready? <clears throat> I'm going to go with the first quote. I've got my little cue cards here for everybody watching at home. The first quote is, right, don't laugh at my accent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's to all of you listening as well. Okay. I, I feel like I need to hold this. The brighter a lady shines, the faster she may burn. <laughs> lady whistle down. Yes, there you go, <laughs> ding, ding, one nil, she's got it. Okay, this is a good one, are you ready? Oh, I hope I say this word right, I always got this word wrong. Your love is an unrequited fantasy. That's Marina. I feel like I needed to say that better, but yes, it was Marina. I definitely didn't put my, uh, my accent on there. <laughs> but it was, it. of course, it was your amazing character, Marina. Now, this is a good one. Okay, I'm going to put my best accent on. Is everybody ready? <clears throat> and I've got like a movement for this. I wish to be entertained. Lady Danbury. Or oh, the queen. The queen. The queen. <laughs> that was my, I don't know what this hand is. I mean, lots of people will tell me that's not what the queen does, but that was my queen. That's, it made me that's think how of I her feel. big hair. <laughs> yeah. It did help. Her, her big hair was fantastic. It did. I'm so glad it helped. Okay. This is a really good one. I actually love this quote. I hope I get this right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Why must our only options be to squawk and settle and never leave the nest? That's, what if I want to fly? That's Eloise, played by yes! Claudia Jesse. She had some fantastic quotes, didn't she? Yeah, she's fantastic. She's one of the best actresses in the whole show. She's amazing. She is fantastic. I love her so much. Okay, and the final one, we spoke a little bit on this before. It's quite funny. The final one is, 
I was able to squeeze my waist into the size of an orange and a half when I was Prudence's age. That's Lady Featherington. That is, of course, your, is she your auntie? My aunt, yeah. Your aunt, Lady Featherington, and that's the right, you got five out of five, baby. Yeah, you did amazingly. Like, you know what, I'm just in the I studio. <laughs> I was worried they'd be really obscure quotes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we couldn't make it too. We couldn't make it too difficult. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, Ruby, it's been so much fun. It's been a delight to meet you today. Thank you so much for joining us on PLT Behind Closed Doors. I can't wait for this episode to go live and for all of your fans and all of our followers to hear how amazing you are and everything about Bridgeton. It's been fantastic. Oh, thank you. It's been great. Thank you so much. And hopefully in the near future, we will see each other in person. We'll see each other at PLT and we can do this. Maybe do something fun again. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, good luck with the next series. We can't wait. I'm already counting down the days. We'll be watching your Instagram and everything you do until then. And yeah, have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Thank you. You too. And that's actually a wrap. Hey. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was great. Oh, that was so much fun.